moment. You have trained all week four. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you get to apply everything you've learned. All right, so let's get into it. The Bukhan People's Republic, a communist style dictatorship, and its southern neighbor, Nan Han, a western style democracy, have been politically opposed to each other since each country's inception following the Second World War. Bukhan has been economically hamstrung, agrarian society, whilst at the same time, Nam Han has become a worldwide economic powerhouse. No idea what I'm talking about, obviously. <laughs> Many decades ago, during the Cold War, each nation's superpower backer forced the nations to set up a commerce zone in the DMZ between the countries. This allowed Bukhan to sell their agricultural products to Nam Han, and in theory, Nam Han's consumer goods could flow into Bukhan. Recent years of drought and central government mismanagement of the agri agricultural system has brought famine to Bukhan. The Bukhan regime has demanded all proceeds of the commerce zone be given to them and Namhan to abandon the DMZ to allow it to become an exclusively an agricultural zone for Bukhan. The silica and Lake Dompian pool is central to the electronics industry of Namhan and the agricultural products are important to the welfare of the Namhan people as most Namhan land is mountainous and does not lend itself to farming on a large scale. Namhan has refused to concede to Bukhan demands. Namhan has tried to defuse the situation by ignoring Bukhan incursions and offering favorable terms for Bukhan on the proceeds of the Commerce Zone, but have made the de decision to defend the Commerce Zone by putting a Namhan def National Defense Company in the Commerce Zone as a show of resolve. This major escalation by Namhan has convinced Bukhan regime that they must respond. All right, after that rousing road to war, welcome to Pegasus Test. And on today's edition, we're covering the fall semester of One Shepherd's Bravo Company in West Virginia. This is the FTX. Now, the road to war gave the overall situation of what had been going on all week. We did a total integration of the scenario, as I've mentioned in the previous videos, right from the clandestine night link up in Warrior Basic all the way up to the FTX. And we wove the story together. Now, the, uh, the One Shepherd platoon has been split into two forces, and now they're going to go head to head. One side has adopted the role of Bukhan, the aggressor, and the other side has remained Nam Han, the defender. And they were given their briefs, the students took command, they put in their wish list of gear they want, they task organized as they saw fit, but. Uh, based on their plans for the mission, and then they got a good night's sleep. Uh, the Op 4 chose to have a PT session the next morning, whereas the Blue 4 chose to just do mission prep. Anyways, <laughs> the Imperialist dogs are stealing our food and exploiting our resources, causing the famine and starvation that is racking our nation. We will not tolerate this any longer. However, it's not the time yet to crush them. We are going to try to take this without uh, undue force and make this a fate accompli that the world cannot deny. So your mission is to cross the DMZ into the so-called Commerce Zone, our imperious puppets below us use, and you will find water and a cache of landmines here at this location. All right, you are on the evening. Uh, what's today? Oh, what is today? Second? Today is the twenty-second. Twenty-second. Uh, uh, on the evening of the twenty-second, mine this road here, so the imperialists can no longer extract our food. Here, you take yes. the whole road. Got yes, it. the whole road from this location to the DMZ. You will mine that road. You have that date? Hey. It's tonight. tonight. So, yes. admin inject, mm -hmm. he means mine our side of the road. Don't put anything, you know, don't, get, put it on don't, the don't touch hardball. But yeah, you put it just to the side of the road that simulates mining the road. No later than? Yeah, no earlier than darkness. Okay. And then be done by the time the sun comes up. Right. I'm giving you maximum flexibility on that uh, that I can. Right. Okay. <clears throat> also, we have found that the imperialist puppets have installed sensors 
at this little old farm complex down here. And they are constantly checking the sensors. Other of our units have gone down there and have reported much enemy activity there. So during the daylight hours, I want you to kill the puppet troops that come to check the sensors. Okay, we will use their own technology against them. They think they can find us by putting out their sensors and stuff. We'll kill them when they come to check their sensors. Do we know when, they're expect are they, when they are expected to be there? Do we have any idea? Uh, the pattern that's been established that they tend to do it during daylight hours because we know they're not as good as us and they're afraid to go out in the dark. You want us to do anything with the sensors? No, use them as bait. The previous uh, reconnaissance that we've had in the area says the puppet troops come out and they check them, make sure whatever they do with them, we don't know, but they're always out there in daylight hours fiddling with them. We know they're all around this farmhouse here for whatever reason, so when they come out to do what they do, that's when you kill them. You want that done daylight today? Yes. Roger. And continue that. Um, daylight operations until further notice. Get the road mined tonight. Okay, so ambush farmhouse until notified to stop and then mine road at daylight at midnight. Yeah. Uh, as you may or may not know, we've sent several forces over the last week down into the commerce zone to show the imperialist dogs that we will not tolerate their presence. There have been many clashes. We know there is an imperialist presence down there, but we cannot tell you the size of their force. All right, you have complete freedom where to set up your patrol base. I would advise to have some kind of clear lines back to our lines so we can reinforce you as necessary or extract you if it's required. But I would remind you, gentlemen, this so-called commerce zone that the imperialists is Bukhan territory and we will inject, eject the imperialists. Okay, now some real world stuff. You have this northern water point up here, and you have the southern one down here. Whichever water point you use, when it reaches about a 25% capacity, call that in to the white cell so we can get it replenished for you. Okay. Also, um, the FOB has, will have water cans here. So that's always an alternate water point. Upon completion of the op order, the team leaders of the op four took their troops out and did rock drills to uh, do their rehearsal of concept, check their battle drills, and otherwise get prepared. And that allowed the leadership of the op four to put their orders together to their troops. All right, guys, listen up. All right, so here's your situation. Enemy activity north of the DMZ. The enemy is massing. Intel says they're going to move into the area. We think they're going to do battlefield preparation uh, operations. We know from a fact that our benevolent superpower is putting pressure on their benevolent superpower. So we are not expecting uh, full out armored or mobile assault from the enemy. What we do expect is much more harassment operations from them to disrupt the commerce zone that we're protecting. But we're going to hedge our bets. The first thing we're going to do is this FOB is entirely too exposed on the border. It's undefensible for you. So we are going to pull you back, have you occupy the combat outpost down here. That second platoon was in the night they got hit by the infiltrators. Yep. Okay. Occupy that, establish your um, combat outpost, and then we're going to have you conduct ambush operations. We believe, based on the operations you conducted yesterday on your route recon and the mines that you found, found that they're intending to shut down MSR Raceway and deny the commerce to flow through so they can cut us off from our food and our silica. Okay. All right, so what I want you to do is we believe they are in placing the mines at night. We want you to catch them and kill them as they in place the mines. Okay. Our engineer assets 
are keeping the lower road neck operation. So conduct your ambush in this zone. Anywhere between this traffic circle and uh, the DMZ border. Right. Second traffic circle to DMZ border. Right. You have a well at this location right here. Okay. Those are the ones we outlined. Yeah, the ones we talked about last night. That is your, your well, okay? okay. Um, you always have water back here notionally. That's a, you know, stuff. There is a well up here in the northern area. Should you conduct all any operations in that area, mm -hmm. you have that water access to that water source as well. Okay. okay. So, well, I can't give you much more than that. As you can tell, our intel is kind of sketchy. But okay. over the last week, we have seen nothing but enemy activity increase day to day. Okay. Our national command authority has decided that despite Lucan's demands. We are not conceding the DMZ. We are not conceding the uh, Commerce Zone. Uh, I don't need to remind you, gentlemen, that the overwhelming uh, part of our agriculture that feeds our people come out of this DMZ. Mm -hmm. We cannot let our people starve. Mm -hmm. Very well. Any questions? Yes. So, seeing as they have gone over more and more brazenly, and we are now taking blatantly kinetic operations to attempt to, to stem that tide. Can we get any artillery support from our friendly lines into the ambush zones? Uh, Since we don't have to position ahead of time, we can, you know, no, they're in our territory. At this point, I'm going to tell you no, um, mainly because that is a decision being reserved by higher levels of command. Okay. The, our government's hope is that this can be resolved diplomatically. Um, our superpower ally is putting much pressure on their superpower ally. So we are hoping that this will be limited to incursions and that I do not, do not have to transition your force from trying to eliminate infiltrators to trying to stop any army. Okay. But, you know, don't be afraid to ask for what you need. I can't guarantee I can get it for you, but it never hurts to ask. Sure. Okay. Gentlemen? Questions? Could we request uh, brigade or division level ISR assets to maybe be able to give us an idea of where enemy locations are, especially during the evening time? We think that just because of the amount of thermal imagery capability that they have, we would maybe like to try and mass or put ourselves in locations last minute as we're able to ID them. Is that something we can ask for? Oh, you've been all week getting that intel coming down, uh, so any of it that we can get will pass on. The best that we can tell you is based on that mining operation, mm -hmm. you know, they say that they intend to shut down the MSR because one of their demands is that we turn the entire DMZ and all its agriculture over to them. Okay, so related question. So we had the sensors in place the other day. Is there a way we could use those to increase our intelligence available over the next couple of days? Uh, the way the sensors work is they are transmitting data back to G2. The G2 has detected much enemy activity in the area, so that's right. definitely an area that you want to patrol, possibly set up ambushes in, because the enemy is transiting that area. Okay. If we get any firmer detail, we will get that passed down to you. Will we have any additional sensors or mines uh, issued to us and missions as the situation evolves? Uh, right now, you're not going to get any mines issued because you're on a counter mining mission, basically. Yeah. You know, uh, if they are emplacing mines along the MSR, we expect you guys to stop them. That is literally what we expect you to do. The MSR has to stay open. That's how all our vegetables get to us. Mm -hmm. okay. After the mines are in place, is there any way to demine them? Call it in the higher headquarters. We'll get you some and mark them, and we'll turn that over to EOD. I know you guys are hard chargers and stuff, but you, uh, we're not going to lose your people to uh, enemy mines. We'll let the experts take care of them. The Op 4, better known as the People's Republic of Bukhan, stepped off from the FOB first. and They moved via foot to establish their patrol base in the northern part of the AO. Hey guys. After the Op 4 had uh, departed hey the FOB, the Blue 4, better known as the Nam Han Defense Force, was inserted via M50 vehicle down to the combat outpost at the very south end of the AO. So what we've done so far is we've moved the majority of our patrol 
down to the combat outpost as permission orders. And we've also had a smaller element break off. We had a deception drop where they appeared like they were deploying with the rest of us, when in reality they stopped a short distance away. They punched out into the woods and they're setting up two ambushes uh, for as soon as the Op 4 start X, we're gonna punch them in the nose. Very quickly, after establishing their patrol base, the Blue 4 RTO was able to establish what the enemy radio frequencies were and monitor their comms. we do we can even put the big radio on their freak listen in and then we'll, we'll listen on the, on our own channel with the 128s so i'm gonna go in and grab that second one and we'll, we'll bring it in here in the center good job dude okay, so, and you're gonna hang out in this area looking at them. yeah that makes yeah. sense okay, cool. right, i need you to hang out over with lt and, and pull our kind of rear quadrant security in the vicinity of that direction, okay? Roger. So find a good spot, you can lean up against a tree, and I want you to be right there if he needs you, because he might have you communicate with Sony or something like that. Right, your shot distance, gotcha. But he's got his head up a radio, and he needs to stay that way. So Sulvi's running the show security-wise. Right. Okay? have radios because I stole yours. And who had yours from the team? That's it? Yeah. That's it was the one? Okay. Why don't you go ahead and switch out with me? Okay. And that'll work out. Good time. Alright, guys. One in. Okay. Orient that way until Farmer John gets here. Just listen in. I got no guns on our main avenue approach. Going to be the six of us. What we're going to do, we got tasked from hire, is to essentially ambush the dilapidated house during the day, and we're going to ambush the roads when they try and place mines during the night. So we got Chow in, we're pretty well established here. Um, I told everybody earlier we still have our four man HK team out, uh, which could be in buddy pairs. If we can link up with them on the way, fantastic. If not, we're still going to try and launch an ambush. Depending on if they're out there already, it could just be more like a probing attack uh, when we actually get there. The lapidated house. That was the lapidated house, mm -hmm. right. So we're going to get up there. If they're not there, we're going to set up a small ambush. Um, the intention is not annihilation. The intention is to fucking punch them in the nose and stop them from doing whatever it was that they wanted to do. Because this is not their house. Cool. All right. Uh, if they're already there, then it'll essentially be a probing attack with the exact same intent. Does that make sense? Yep. Molotaurus, you tracking? Yep. Alright guys, so we all got water, enough for a, a pretty pretty big movement. We got our magazines, ammo, all that, and we shot anything, right? Um, Everybody got a chance to get something to eat? Yep. 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 Okay. Alright, we're going to wait until they finish setting up their uh, their security around Stuart. He's got all our SOI and sensitive stuff. So uh, once we make sure that he's got a, his back is being watched while he's got his nose in the radio, then we will go ahead and step in in, in the next couple of minutes. Understood. You, me, Day, uh, Column and, uh, and Vincent, Vincent over there. Yeah. and John. Yeah, cool. um, and we'll, we'll go check up on them and we'll get into more about task organizing, like 
into an A and a B because we're we're kind of hodgepodge right now. Yeah. Uh, but we'll we'll get to that in just a second. All right. Mm -hmm. cool. Anything else? Okay. After uh, discovering the enemy's radio frequency, Blue Four m moved out to conduct some ambush missions. Later on, most of their ambush patrol was sent back to the patrol base to reconsolidate, reorganize, and conduct a rewatering mission because it was a very hot day and they had expended most of the water with them. In a future episode of Pegasus Test, we will do in-depth analysis of this watering mission because it was done textbook perfect. Upon return from the daylight missions, the Blue Four consolidated, reorganized, and set up their plan for the nighttime missions. Just Bryce. Mm -hmm. Brett, I'm sorry. Um, right now, um, Sugi's been setting up the 360 perimeter. We've not received any contact. Um, yeah. We're bumped to one, four, or uh, my comm side, we're bumped to 46150. Uh, headquarters is using the Bravo card. We currently have the Alpha, mostly because uh, Enemy's been probing us pretty aggressively with like pretending they're Whiskey 97. It's been a pretty epic oh, radio. battle. Radio. Uh, fucking radios. Although I think I've literally, I think they're literally not even using these anymore. Like straight up. Mm -hmm. I've been just hopping through the freeze. Okay. They've basically stopped. Alright. What's the move, boss? So, uh, I just kind of got the, the details of the plan with Sulgi. So, Kevin was here uh, pulling security with her. Her, uh, the last person from her team, Dockery, mm -hmm. come back. He's going to get a uh, first rest cycle. But uh, so it's going to be Sulgi's team of four, mm -hmm. reinforced with Kevin. We're, we're um, kind of cycling through the rest cycles right now. I'm on rest cycle right now. I'm just helping him out so he can eat. Right. No, that's that's great. You guys are doing great. But though, so Sulgi's team of four, reinforced with Kevin, plus Young Jay, are going to go out and they're going to set an ambush and basically camp for the night. Okay. So they're going to go out with six. They're going to... So we've got a, uh, let me see that map there. So check it out. So here's the road, right? And you have to mine mm -hmm. this section. Mm -hmm. You got a bigger one? Yeah, I got the right one. Yeah, I got this one. Here you go, right here. On the road, basically from the guard shack south to the second traffic circle. Right, okay. that's, that's the part that's in play anyway. Now, this part has a hedgerow, uh -huh. and, so, and then there's another one right here. Now, if you were going to go out and mine a road, would you want overwatch? Yeah. yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty open, right? Especially on these ones. All right. So, you can, here's what I'm thinking you gotta set one here, and you mine this half, and then you move, and then you set this half, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. It does the job. Sounds like a lot of fucking work to me. What if they were to sit here and they basically just camp on the north side? Overwatch. Hey everybody, move 10 feet to the south side. Overwatch. That sounds like a good plan, right? Yeah. So I'm either expecting them to be planting security in there. Or we will get there first and we will set up an ambush to basically do a, a triangle of two on this side, two on that side, two facing near security. And then they can go 50 50 throughout the night and basically just camp on that road. Okay. Uh, All right. And so the fact that they're already on their rest cycle and, and getting in catnaps where they can is fucking phenomenal. I, I couldn't be happy with everybody's individual initiative on that. That's, that's beautiful. So that's what we're looking at right now. Uh, everybody else still needs a rest cycle. You guys yeah. did get water, correct? Yeah, yeah we got water. Well, we'll get you in a second, but you guys got water, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so the rest of us. Part of Nick and MJ's mission right now is to basically confirm where the PV is mm -hmm. by process of elimination. We think we actually know where it is. We're going to confirm where it is by attacking everything but it. Because I don't want to attack their PV during the day mm -hmm. when it's easy for them to move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to basically confirm where they're at so we can go tag them tonight mm -hmm. once they're essentially functionally stuck there. Yep. And then we can do all kinds of the fun games like bag dumps into their, into their AO and uh, leaving a fucking Bluetooth speaker blasting Barbie Girl and all kinds of fun games like that to keep them up all goddamn night. Because right now we've had, I believe, three contacts with them, mm -hmm. all oh, initiated so by Dockery's us. you took idea, huh? All initiated by us and all on their territory. And I want to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, as best as we can tell, uh, we were 
Reed and I camped on the dilapidated house for about an extra hour and a half because of the water issue. And uh, the nearest contact we heard was exactly along Nick and Young Jay's direction of travel, private travel, approximately 300 meters away. Does Young Jay have and a machine gun lower? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's what and I was doing. He, and yeah. as near as we can tell, he basically mag dumped into somebody. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and then continued on. And I know he's still alive. He's talking to you. And yeah. and uh, we keep hearing progressively farther away gunshots on our terms. So I can be happy with where we're at right now. All right. Mm -hmm. Jay relieved me so I can come and eat. I'm I'm done. So I'm going to go and get him. All right. I'm going to go back okay. on my radio. Um, Are you good? So we're going to requisition okay. for some water with the OC change. Um, and then we'll see about. Are you, you still have a little bit of water, so you're not going to die in the next hour? Oh, I still got a shit ton of my uh, rucksack. I just got to throw up my camel bag. Okay, perfect. Again. Go ahead and do that right now. Do that. And uh, and then when that jerry can comes in, we'll top everybody off. And we'll probably make one more run, top off the jerry can as folks are cycling in throughout the night. Yeah. All right? Yep. All right. Good job, guys. Cool, man. Nice right. job. Get this done. So the evening mission. What's on there? Did you fucking bag dump, you motherfucker? Yes. <laughs> it's the our patrol route. We push up from Dilapity to House. We get troops of contact here. I can give you the grids in time for that. We heard it. Cool. We made us all giggle. Cool. Uh, on that, I encountered two dudes about 15 meters from me in Bushline. Okay. I told him he didn't see him. I, I took one shot. Like I'm not functioned. Uh huh. Um, I'm positive I got a hit. Okay. But nice. uh, we we booger boogered out. Were they traveling or? I heard them, so I'm okay. they were. Okay. Um, but I, I definitely only saw two people. Okay. After that, we boogered out. They did not pursue, so I'm guessing that they they boogered out as well. Okay. Uh, that was an act, just for yeah. time reference. Okay. So you yeah. I'm pretty sure you got the one. Um, the other one. I'm pretty sure I got the one. I yeah, thought my dog. That was okay. that, that was yeah. it. And ten minutes later, we heard someone yell ambush and a single shot fired. And that I was, wasn't any of us. And I was along this route. That was somewhere. That was somewhere over in this area. Okay. So the, I would call it in, in range there. But if that's one. Mm -hmm. So I don't but know. You guys weren't there, obviously. I see the route right there. Yeah. So we you went back around. You weren't You just heard it. Yeah. One round. Ambush. One round. And it yeah. was like maybe blue and blue under and. Maybe. I'm guessing. It's but it's definitely happened before. So. Cool. So anyway. Maybe. We rolled back through the way that we initially went. Yeah. We established two far away ambush points. Um, we got to this point, it was about uh, 5, 15, 5 point that range. We are like, okay, hey, we need to get respawn time from the close. We need to either commit to assaulting or go forward and looking at the distance we had there. And assault, if we did that, the respawn would be feasible. We would yeah, it was just two fucking time. things. Yeah. yeah. When we were trying to escal on their first recon this entire time we got stuck on the way out. Okay. So the only place we saw people for sure was here. Nothing here towards the end here. We were purposely making noise trying to incite. So over here, at the red actually, is where we had a mag dump go. Okay. So if you if you didn't tree line, watch with listen, and we have good, good visibility, um, we didn't see any response to that. Okay, so just the one actual contact? One actual contact. Okay. Yeah, I'll fucking take it. Okay. I'll fucking take um, that. It's positive work. Yeah. It's in their neighborhood. I love everything so, about it, and you guys get on your time hack. Okay. Yeah. Sound judgment all around, guys. What do you, what do you need from us? Um, I gave you coordinates for far away, uh, far away ambush points that we've established for one back here, but the another one is shown over here where you have up to 500 meters visibility. Okay, so we're going to have uh, two water jugs coming in okay. here shortly, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to re-up on that, okay. drink a bunch, refill again. I requested 10 gallons, okay. so there should be plenty for you guys to have your fill and end up with full stuff. Yeah, well, just, uh, Thanks. Other than that, if you guys haven't stopped to have anything for like dinner-ish chow, okay. now's a good time. Uh, I got eyes up this way. Okay. Uh, I did prep Swoogie on the specifics of what you're going to take her out on in a little bit. So it's going to be her fire team, you, plus Kevin. Kevin is the one who stayed back and did security with her. So Sounds good. there'll be six. Yep. And, uh, we are now in the morning of day two. FTX. As you can see from our very face, this is there, getting ready. We're gonna have a coffee after this.
To the average person, this may just look like a small road paved going through a field in the middle of anywhere USA. Really what this is, is the main thoroughfare at the Bravo Company One Shepherd Regiment in West Virginia. But, for the purposes of this exercise, it was NSR Raceway. And the Op 4 had a mission to mine this road. Let's see how well they did. What you're looking at right now is an emplaced anti-vehicle mined roadside bomb placed by the Op 4 under the watchful eye of the Blue 4 who was supposed to stop them. The Op 4 managed to uh, bury this mine and also leave several other overt ones along the route. Two buried, two overt. And if you look over to that finger of trees, they managed to pull off this feet under the eyes of the blue four that had an ambush set up in that tree line. After a successful mining mission of where the op four emplaced their mines and destroyed a blue force vehicle, the next morning they then moved out to take on their next mission, which was to ambush around the sensors in accordance with their original orders. Meanwhile, the Blue Four moved out to an place ambushes in the area of the sensors because the sensors had detected enemy activity. Well, I don't know if you'd call it an ambush or not, but there was an incredibly huge firefight around the farmhouse or chateau, depending on which side you're on is what you called it. Uh, it was very prolonged, very sustained, went on for well over an hour, lots of casualties. Each side had respawns that went back into the battle. Ultimately, the Op 4 managed to hold the area, but that really wasn't their mission. And I'll go ahead and let representatives of both the Op 4 and the Blue 4 explain their sides of the story. Tell me what happened. So, we were moving up to the farmhouse to set an ambush uh, and try and catch Blue 4 moving into it. Uh, we did that last night, didn't get any luck this morning or this afternoon came up to the farmhouse and just started setting into our initial position and they had an ambush already laid for us just by a few minutes it seems like so that resulted in a pretty big back and forth firefight uh, for about 45 minutes and then uh, both sides rushed in reinforcements had another pretty big firefight and it looks like things are going back and forth right now okay so neither side has gained a clear advantage yet um, I believe based on uh, what I saw uh, that we have managed to push the enemy out of the farmhouse. Uh, we pushed them out of the farmhouse initially as well in the first firefight, so it looks like we may have command of the ground. Uh, I don't know the exact enemy losses, but I know we still have an effective uh, force in the field. What is your ammo situation? Uh, we're, we're fairly low. Um, we've got a couple guys who have, uh, have taken very minimal contact. So we've cross-loaded that, uh, but we're, as a whole, uh, if we call black less than half, uh, I'd say the, the unit is black, or, or thereabouts. Well, you're down to a mag each, basically. Well, if we started with seven and ten, then having about three mags each would be roughly so you have three, three or four, three, three or four, okay. yeah. All right. So we have some, but uh, there was a lot of hooking and jabbing up there, yeah. and yeah. Uh, a lot of horrendous miles armor uh it was really hard to fucking dig some people out yeah. so that that ain't up a lot yeah i understand completely no it's a good flight you're in a very contested zone you know the situation with the road last night uh we heard that it was damaged uh two slipped by us uh and the last we heard was it was being repaired so we had a uh unit here that was essentially on a rest cycle and they're they're prepped to go out tonight and and kind of camp on the road again Okay. If it comes to it. So here's your orders for tonight. We're going to send you an EOD specialist with specialist EOD equipment. Okay. We need you to demine the road from that traffic circle at where the finger of land comes out mm -hmm. north to the old border. Okay. You're going to get a big demining mission. Um, give you all the support we can give you for that. The enemy's going to try to do more mines or try to prevent you. Don't know what they're going to do. Hopefully they do nothing. Okay. Um, that's going to be your big push. So why don't you haul back right now? Just 
on a tactical suggestion here. Set security, rest your people so you can get that road open because that is a mission essential road open. Set security on the road right now. If you want to. Well, I was asking, was that the suggestion? No, the suggestion is maybe pull back here, rest okay. up. Okay, yeah. And we have distribute ammo, right water off, get out there because, like I so say, you you're getting a specialist and specialist equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're going to have to provide a lot of security. Sure. You have a demining procedure and stuff. Okay, we we'll fill us in on that when he gets here. Yeah, we'll tell you what he has to do and stuff. Okay. All right, so um, all that will be coming at approximately the 1900 time frame. Okay. All right, I'll see what we can do about some ammo. Okay. Do your best to redistribute. Sure. Okay, Already. I want you back that mission completed and you're back here in your PB or your combat outpost, 0600, to stand by for further orders. Okay, as of right now, does. Does the house have further uh, further relevance, or is the fact that the cameras were still in place this entire time have any relevance? Were we able to get any information on we it? We are still getting data on it. That's why okay. we have you going there. Um, there are still enemy in the area that we're getting uh, data from. Okay. So the sensors have done the job, and you guys, have, from what we can tell, inflicted significant casualties on the enemy. Okay. Okay, so you hit them, did what we wanted you to do, so you can check that box. So we'll work on security, uh, getting out there, setting up security as soon as possible. We'll get our specials about 1900, and uh, we'll return to uh, the PB here no later than 06. Right. Any miss any points? Um, at this time, at 06, we'll come to you with a further order set. Okay. So uh, at that time, regardless of what orders we have, we'll be prepared to move. Roger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Blue 4 put their uh, plan together for the anti-mining mission that evening so the mines could be removed once their specialist arrived. Hold on. Alright, so we got a three-man detail to you, uh, assigned to you, three smokes each. And the general scheme maneuver is all nine of us are going to go together all the way up. I'm going to take this here until... The intersection of these two hedges. Right, so, right, so. This right is here is where the three men element and you are going to go break off. Mm -hmm. Dockery is going to take point. He was here last night on ambushing people laying the mines. Okay. So he's got personal knowledge of it yesterday, last night. He'll take you in there. And from here, you can pop out of the hedgerows. We have a six man element here to give you overwatch. And you'll be able to start clearing. Upward, northwards from there. While you guys are breaking off and doing this, there's another, the remainder of the six, I'll be taking north to essentially move into contact through here to clear this section. Ideally, we'll get there before them and we'll place ourselves on the eastern edge, guns outward to deny its use to the enemy to ambush you. Uh, if we do encounter any contact, then we'll obviously try and flush them out uh, as best we can. Um, so in the ideal scenario, where you make it all the way to the end, uh, unharassed, either to be just propelled or whatever, and you make it to the end, you'll link back up with us at the end there, where we'll remain for essentially until we have to hump it back here. Uh, our orders are to make it all the way back here by zero 06, so that'll probably mean like uh, 4.30 movement or so uh, in order to make sure we can make that time hack. So you can get with us and then we'll plug you back home together. Uh, in the event that you guys do take contact while you're out there, obviously we've got these guys over here, plus we'll have another force somewhere in this line, depending on what we find, to, uh, to support, attack, defend, etc. Uh, but if you guys do take that, then your security element is going to pop some amount of smoke. Right? If one of them gets smoked, then they might throw two each or something like that. But an appropriate amount of smoke to give you cover. And probably the best bet is going to go back to uh, essentially our hard point here at the hedges, where it will radio to higher uh, about any developments in the situation and see what we're going to do from there. So you'll essentially either be remaining overnight with us while we continue to watch the road and make sure it doesn't get remined yeah. or uh, we have to readjust if we do get attacked, can't complete it successfully.
on uh, what hire wants us to do. All right, understood, yeah. Um, so what's going to happen from my perspective is I'm just going to the right side of the road. Okay. we we'll start sleeping back and forth and make our way all the way across. Okay. Being back with you guys. That's all I need. Um, okay. That should be it. If, Perfect. If he finds more mines, it takes him anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds to do a uh, um, deactivation of the mine. Okay. okay. Now is that something like you're going to be kneeling over it? Are you able to go prone and screw with it that way? Or? I'm probably going to have to kneel over it. Okay. Uh, depending on where it is and what kind of mine it is, I'm going to adjust for it. Fair enough. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll break off and tell your team general plan and, uh, or what you need from them, rather. Uh, that's what they're going to get from you. And uh, we'll step off here shortly if that works for you. When night came, the Blue Four anti-mine team moved out with their demining specialists. As they moved out, they began to get mines decommissioned and safed so the road could be open. But unfortunately, they were discovered and a firefight ensued. Are you taking near misses? I'm down. Good? You alive? I'm good. CCP on me! I'm gonna stay up here until you guys get a little more. CCP on me! Hey, Young Jay, join the uh, okay, dead guys. Hey, hey me. Yeah. Ready to move? I'm ready to move. You need to move now. I'm moving. Right, I'm moving in front of you, okay? Okay. Ready? Keep going. Yeah, Watch the laser. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Will, get the cover. Hey guys, we're done. Although their initial demining efforts were interrupted by the enemy, uh, the Blue Four was able to rally and later in the night go back and finish the demining mission. After completion of the demining mission, the Blue Four began their retrograde back to their combat outpost. The Blue Four had one final mission to complete that evening. On their way back to their combat outpost, they were tasked to go by the barn chalet and recover the four cameras that had been in place at the beginning of the crisis. Good morning viewers, it is Index and not for making their rather victorious march back to the FAB. I don't know where the victory is achieved, we will wait for that in the AR. Let's not to make any presumptions. That's Will, we'll see. Instructor extraordinaire. And then the FTX was over, and the warriors regathered at the FOB, we went into the mess hall, and then we did a real extensive AR. So extensive right here, I can't do it justice, but I will publish that in a video next week so you can see it in its entirety. We hope you've enjoyed this coverage of the One Shepherd Bravo Company Fall 22 semester, and we hope you tune in for more One Separate coverage.